Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, whatever time it is of the day that you're viewing this broadcast of Grace Bible Fellowship. We, we started something new this year uh, as we're reintroducing ourselves to the audience of people who become familiar with seeing uh, my face on these uh, C10 uh, station, the C10 station and broadcast. Uh, it's called Grace Recovery Church. And specifically, we use that word recovery because it deals with all types of social, emotional, and psychological uh, things that happen to us in our society with trauma. And last time, we started talking about the issue of uh, how we deal with emotional and specifically psychological pain that all of us endure at some point in our life, uh, knowingly or unknowingly. And sometimes, unfortunately, when that pain isn't dealt with, it manifests itself more and more as you get older in life and all types of um, things that are challenges for us as human beings. That social interaction that we need from children, being children born to this world, and trauma that happens as a result of, excuse me folks, <coughs> happens as a result of something somebody says to you that causes the emotional injury or somebody, something somebody does to you physically or some trauma you see physically, and how that records itself in a memory bank that as we grow older in life, those those emotional traumas that's uh, manifested by something you smell or something you hear or somebody you see that really is not gone anywhere, it's just suppressed. Um, sometimes they use the word being in denial um, because it's too painful to bring those things up. And the natural process of how we were created is to put up defense mechanisms. Those defense mechanisms are, are meant to protect you but really what they do is they immobilize you uh, and cause you to, to uh, feel rejection, to experience shame, to experience guilt, and really to withdraw yourself in isolation, to hide. Uh, not necessarily physically, because you can be around people and still feel alone. So the reason we changed from the Bible issue, because sometimes that word is really offensive to people because of their past experiences with uh, an authority uh, outside of their own belief system is to say, okay, it still deals with a recovery process of how you're able to begin to heal, begin to uh, deal with those that damage emotionally, psychologically, by identifying it first and then find a spiritual solution that's going to actually help you recover and, and become what you were intended to be a fully functioning fruitful, productive person in your own life. And the reason for that is so as we get better, as I get better, I can go help other people. I can't make them get better. I have no power over a person's individual choices of free will. And part of that free will, you can cut off the TV right now, change the station, that's, that's your choice. But if you're somebody listening in the audience that is looking for um, some, some solution to the deep hurt and the trauma that when you're alone all by yourself and, and you, you start experiencing anxiety, uh, fear, uh, the darkness that comes upon the thinking capacity that deals with feelings and emotions is part of how, how you evaluate things from the outside and not really how we're made from the inside. That trauma is part of your emotional um, state, it's part of your, your inner man is called. The inner man is the invisible part of man, the part you can't see, but it's real. You know that. Have you ever experienced sometime when somebody, when you're going through some trauma, and you just feel like somebody's twisting your inside? It's like the pain you feel because of hurt. Well, the joy about that is that as you learn how to deal with that hurt and have a spiritual solution that really, honestly, is unconditional love. And the power of unconditional love, and I'm not talking about, you know, the feelings we have when we're have a friendship or romantic, but there's a eternal love that's designed to heal us. And the more I'm able to tap into that, I'm able to see that love come out of me and heal the folks around me, whether it's my wife, my children, my kids, by allowing people to be exactly who they are and accepting them just the way they are and not having judgment or criticism about uh, them being different than me because they're meant to be different than me. And I, I always say it this way, everybody's got their character flaws, all of us have our emotional um, 
stuff we bring to relationships. But the more I learn how to focus on me changing, it's amazing everything changes. If I'm trying to focus on the people around me changing, it just gets more frustrating and more um, uh, problematic and I lash out or I'm trying to start telling people how they're supposed to be. And that's a control issue because allowing them to be who they are can be frightening at times. But it's freedom, really. Once, once that begins to happen to me inside, then the freedom comes for me to be what I'm supposed to be, what I was created to be. So we talked about last time, this is the second um, recording of our last message. I'm Pastor Russell Shepherd. I'm your Bible teacher today. Call me Brother Russell. Call me Brother Shep. Just call me Hey. Hey, you. But uh, I just want to be able to be a part of something that's bigger than me, which is helping people. We talked about last time who we were, what we believe, and why do we do this. And we said one of the reasons we do this is because of what I just uh, did in a summary form. The thing about people's spirits coming alive, awakening your spirit, and being able to connect with your spirit to your soul, those two components of the immaterial part of a person is where the belief system is able to change. Um, the belief system in my head never changes. All the things I've gone through, the things I've, I've remembered, the things I've done to myself, the things I've learned, th it comes into my mind when I'm under some type of anxiety or I'm afraid. And when I'm afraid, there those defense mechanisms I talked about earlier come up to defend me, but really what they do is they mobilize me to deal with the truth, which is I need to change. And in doing that, Folks, none of us are meant to live by ourselves. Um, there's a saying that says none of us live into ourselves. And so as we come together as people of all different stripes and hum, uh, humes, you know, racial issues, uh, gender issues, sexual orientations, whatever it is, this stuff about the divisions that we see in our society today is just, it's, it's not good. It's a... Uh, Pastors that says the house to divide against itself cannot stand. So you know that in your personal life. If I'm in a relationship with my mate and there's dissension and uh, adversarial types of things in the home and we both take you know, put the, the draw the line in the sand and she takes her side and I takes my side, we're not gonna get anywhere. There has to be some humility and some honor that we are able to submit ourselves to each other and, and still be independent but learn how to be interdependent interdependent wow what a word that is not to be codependent but to be interdependent and yet maintain my independence but there's there's a need for help and as I've gotten older the greatest thing I can do to help me personally is to tell somebody what I'm going through and ask for help I call it taking the mask off I know as people get older, the trauma that happened as a child, as I talked about earlier, as we started this uh, broadcast, it becomes a mass that's so thick, they can't even see it's on, but other people can. You see it in, in activities like constantly being busy always, constantly trying to solve somebody else's problem. It's fascinating. My granddaughter is 13 years old, and I had the privilege of spending some time with her yesterday. and. Um, she used the word that it wasn't true during my, my uh, generation and during my time. And I think, I, I believe a lot of it's the social media and the 24 hours uh, on cable TV and some of the, the content that we're exposed to, your cell phone, your computer, et cetera. She used a word called drama, drama. I'm like, man, 13 years old, you're talking about drama? And really, another word for drama, folks, is just chaos and confusion. In my life, I have peace. I have serenity. I do not deal with drama. I don't, that was not true in my generation growing up. So society has lost its way uh, to be uh, kind to one another, to be uh, respectful to one another, to be uh, uh, giving to one another. You know, as the verse says, it's more blessed to give than receive. Um, there's another saying that has to do with the uh, recovery program. It says you can only keep what you have by giving it away. That's an inner man belief system. That's a motivation that comes from the heart, not the head. So the heart is the mentality of the soul. It's where life really is. It's part of my soul that's made up of my conscience. 
my uh, moral value system, my will, and my volition. The volition is simply I make choices. I'm accountable for making my choices, but I'm also equally responsible for the consequences of my choices. And that's why I said earlier, the wisdom that has come with time is just before I make a, a bad decision, uh, I solicit people that have experience in that area and I ask for help. And when I ask for help, they can explain to me what they learned so I don't have to make the same decision. So that's what this is all about. How can we help each other? What this program can do to revolutionize your life if you let it. But you have a part two. I'm just gonna share some of the things that I've learned and I'm gonna do it from a recovery standpoint of using principles. And I don't wanna go into the depths of um, what we did before, which was having people turn places in the Word of God that they don't even know what the Word of God is and, and what it's designed to do spiritually. Because I know everybody's got different belief systems, folks, and I can say this to you clearly and, and authoritatively. If your life's not functioning right, it's something wrong with your spiritual condition. It's that simple. If you're trying to fix the outside, which is not the problem, it's your, your body's a vehicle, it's a, it's a house to carry around your inner man. So you have a physical man, an outer man, and you have an inner man, your spirit and your soul. The inner man, I'll say it again, is the immaterial part of man, the part that you can't see, but you know it exists. So when you deal with psychology, they deal with the soul, suki, the ego. But when you're dealing with spiritual matters and eternal matters, you have to go and deal with the spirit part of you, your spirit man. Now your spirit man has two different places it connects. With the world system, there's a course that's set up out here that men who are connected to this course follow it. But it's not set up by the creator, it's set up by somebody who's out to destroy you. So in order for me to be able to see the course that this world operates on, I have to have an awakening. I have to be able to see what I'm looking at and understand it and not get trapped in it. So that's what our purpose is. If this is not something that makes sense to you or something that you're not interested in, I appreciate you visiting us. Uh, free will says I can go do something else. But we're hoping, my hope is that somebody hears what we're going to talk about. That somebody has been looking for an answer to what life is all about. What's your purpose? I guess we can say it that way. What is your purpose in life? Do you have a purpose, or do you not even still know why you're here? So there's five things I want to talk about today. Uh, the first one is that for every problem, there is an answer. Every problem has a solution. So if you're staying in the problem consistently, and you've been doing it for years, and I'll use one that I'm probably going to get in trouble for talking about this, but if you have bad relationships, Let's talk about the opposite sex, male and female, whatever you want to call it. But no matter what you do, you keep in the picking somebody who appears the person that you want from the outside. But then once you get to know this person, you wish you never met them. Well, the problem, folks, is not them. I found out the problem was me. And once I changed, the people who I used to be associated with and pick, I don't. They don't track. I don't track them anymore. They're not attracted to me. Quite frankly, they're repelled. You know, they say they have a saying that says, "Water seeks its own level." And what that means is that, as you have certain belief systems, there. You ever heard of the the, the so-called law of attraction? That we attract who we are. Well, if you want to get something different, folks, you got to do something different. So the first thing. Again, we want to emphasize in our desire when we meet together is that there's a solution for every problem. But the problem can be physically manifested, but the solution is going to be spiritual. And it's not going to be some, you know, like Casper the Ghost type of thing. It's spiritual in terms of principles. There's a principle that everybody knows that they call it uh, reciprocity, or some people call it karma. Um, you know, the law of physics, what goes up must come down. Um, there's a passage in scripture say, what, whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. 
when you put out certain things in your physical realm, it comes back to you in a spiritual realm. So when you're putting out positive things, you're doing good, you're kind to people, those things come back. I have had so many experiences where uh, somebody has asked for something, I've given something, and they took advantage of it. And as long as I didn't retaliate physical with physical, or um, as verse says, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good, and I let it take its natural course, it always came back to me. It might not have came back in the same form that I gave it out in. It might have been money, but it came back in some other, like a service. But it always came back. The thing is I had to wait and be patient. That's a spiritual solution too, patience. And then you begin to realize that you don't have to fix things. The universe is already set up to correct things. But what people do is they, that emotional state where hurt is there. And when you hurt folks, if you don't deal with the hurt quickly, quickly as you can by talking about it, writing about it, going on a walk, somebody injures you, and then you retaliate, or you don't retaliate, that hurt turns to anger. And then the anger turns to resentment. And resentments turn to rage. You, you wonder why so many people just snap. You see the day they just snap, emotionally and psychologically. Sometimes it's a mental health issue, no doubt about that. Sometimes there's some kind of substance abuse or some type of mind move altering chemical. Uh, it can be something like alcohol. You know, they call alcohol, they used to call back in my day, uh, ignorant oil. I used to work in a place that made uh, liquid spirits, uh, a place called Hubilin. We made alcohol. You know, they call alcohol spirits. And when you consume them, some people can drink and they're fine. But they, you ever met somebody that you, they drink and they, they lose control? And those things are called blackouts, that they do something, they say something, they do something, and they don't remember they did it. So some of these substances can be detrimental, uh, if not monitored by a doctor or used correctly. But when people have hurt, you have to medicate the pain. And I'll go back to what I said earlier, how do you deal with the pain? That's a great question. What do you do with your pain? I'm not talking about physical pain, but emotional and psychological pain. If you don't deal with the hurt, it's going to turn into anger. If it turns into anger and you don't deal with it, then it turns into resentment. And a resentment is playing the same thing over and over and over and over again in your head. You might not do it daily, but have you ever experienced yourself just having some challenges with somebody that they stay, uh, take, they call it taking space up in your head? And what that is really is that you're trying to control something you can't control instead of accept it. And all of us experience that because it's a spiritual problem. Therefore, it's a spiritual solution. I've learned that when somebody injures me, I need to talk about it, I need to pray for them. Because they're not my problem. If, if they're going on with their life and I'm the one that has the mental, uh, the mentality to keep that thought in my brain because of some hurt, and it's not always some hurt, it's just, they're not doing what I want them to do when I want them to do it. So then it has a tendency to continue to play over and over again in my head until I deal with it. That thought won't go away. But if I let it get to the resentments, I have to acknowledge that and deal with that where the solution was to deal with the hurt in the beginning. We're going to talk about how do you do that. The other thing I want to talk about is the um, source of spiritual life and where that comes from. We talked about the fact that there is a solution for everything and every man's problem in this physical realm uh, has a spiritual counterfeit. So what I see in the physical realm has a spiritual uh, counterfeit. Uh, con uh, it's a spiritual issue that's manifested in the physical realm. And so that's why spiritual matters matter, right? And uh, what I'm sharing with you is not a theory. It's not something I hoped up on. It's something over the last 47 years. I've come to understand through failure. Just going through things that um, something I was taught in my family or something I learned the guys I grew up around or something I just decided to do because of my thinking and not understanding their, every, everything I do there's a consequence to it. And eventually learning that the decisions I was making really was causing the problem in my life. And when that happened, I had to stop blaming people. And look, I always say to my wife, what part you play in it? 
I, I can't create confusion by myself. Wouldn't it be nice sometimes just to be by yourself and don't have to have mess with uh, you know be bothered with people? That, no, you can't live that way. That that's a uh, that's not a good way to live. We need each other. We need people. We need to be touched. We need to be felt. We need to be heard. But more importantly, we need to be able to give and receive. So those four things we want to make sure that we're addressing. Um, the fact that every problem has a solution. Number two, every physical problem has a spiritual reality that you can't see and it affects your soul, your inner man, who you really are. The solution to every problem is spiritual and the source of every spiritual solution is based on understanding that your makeup, how you made, is that you have a body. You can see my body. You have a soul. You can't see my soul. And you have a spirit. That's the how man is made is a trichotomy. There's a body, soul, and a spirit. And your body is associated with the world around you. You're conscious of the world. That's, that's when children start when they're born. They're aware of their surroundings, but in a limited way. You know, they're aware of their home, their parents, their grandparents, their siblings. But there's a greater world that they're not aware of until they start evolving through education, through, through growing up. And then you begin to see that personality manifest. That's your soul. Now, I can share my body with you. I can have you know, a liver transplant, a heart transplant, other components that we can share our bodies, but I can't share my soul with you. That's, that's unique to Russell. My soul is me. That's my personality. I was created this way, and my personality, I can't change my personality. I can develop it to the point that it's useful and it's not selfish. I'll say something else too while I'm thinking about it. The issue of being selfish and selfless. Selfishness is, is all about me. Uh, me, 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 I, I, I. It's, it's the, the word that deals with selfish motives and self-centeredness, which unfortunately a lot of times in our world system, people are out, they offer themselves. But selflessness is the right mindset, the right mentality. Now I'm concerned about your problems. Now, let me be clear on this one. I'm not talking about being a doormat. I'm not talking about being abused. I'm not talking about, um, you know, being available. Somebody's put in my life, but they don't want anything I can offer them, even though it's been proven in my life to work. And a guy the other day asked me to help him. And he wrote me a uh, paper on, uh, he's bipolar. And um, he also has some other mental health issues. And when he wrote it, it was a series of so-called spiritual realities he was chasing that led to a, a higher consciousness. But part of his paper is that he ended up in the psych war. And he talked about being in a room that had padded windows, and padded walls, and they had, they, he was shackled. And I'm thinking to myself, if the solution you have is spiritual, how do you end up in a psych ward? It didn't make sense to me, but it obviously did to him because he knew everything. And yet, the reason I met him because his life is not functioning right. But anytime you're around somebody and they're willing to accept the help from you, and then he asked me for help, and then he told me, basically, I don't think you can help me because I don't, I'm black and white. I, I just tell you the way I see things, and it's up to you to accept it or not. But this was based on my experience of helping other people. So I didn't try to convince him. He texted me back and said, hey, thanks. I appreciate you offering the help, but I think I'm going in another direction. I said, hey, great. Man. I hope everything works out well. Um, he's free to do that, and it's not my responsibility to go chase after the guy and say, don't you know I have something for you? That would mean I had the problem, not him, or we both had a problem. So that body, soul, and spirit allows me to think things through. And when my thinking is off, um, I was talking to my producer in here, and sometimes, you know, I'm, I'm depressed or I'm, I'm kind of down or I, I'm in the mood. I need to do some exercise, my endorphins and my dopamine. Once I do that and I slow down and I think about something first before I start talking to people, usually I find out it's not even that big of a deal. But if I address something, before I wake up from sleep or my mood, 
I'm usually gonna come out with my head talking, not my heart. And then I, I damage somebody. So that's why I say the body, soul, and spirit. You have to know what component of you is operating. Now, even though I see myself on this, um, this screen, I'm talking from inside out. I'm aware of my inner man. I'm also aware of my outer man. But I know where the source of things are coming from is the mentality of my soul, which is called the heart. It's not the pumping heart. It's the soul of man. All of us have it. So when I talk from my heart, it connects to the heart. When I talk to my head, it's this intellect. It's just a bunch of information that really has no value in terms of relationships. But then I need something to deal with my soul when it's in trauma, when I'm going through something, a death of a loved one, some unexpected event, something in my life that I've never experienced before, it causes fear. They have a uh, acronym uh, about fear, it's false evidence appearing real. And so when you see things and your emotions are tied to your thinking, it creates fear. But the opposite of fear is faith. And that means you just, ask for help and you face it and you'll find out that what you were really thinking was not real it was to you um, something that's going to happen four months from now or something that happened in the past instead of just stay in the moment you know how to stay in the day because that, that's how you live life one day at a time and then the last thing we're going to start talking about is learning how to go in the spiritual realm and there's a word, a word there's a Greek word called uh, epigenosis Epigenosis has two components to it. It's knowledge, but it's on a deeper level. So I might know you, but I don't know you with epigenosis. My wife I know with epigenosis. Um, somebody was saying the other day, they had a program on that. When you can hear somebody that you're in love with, you can hear the voice in your head, that means you're in love with them. I was thinking about my wife today, and I can hear her voice, right? We have epigenosis. It's on a real deep level of not only relationship, but need. And she's my best friend. She's a wonderful lady. So we develop that epigenosis that the eternal creator wants you to have with him. So that's what we're going to start dealing with as we go forward. I don't want to go into anything more today than what we discussed. Um, my producer set the clock, but I'm not sure if I'm going over it or not. So with that being said, we're going to I'll greet you with a greeting um, of, of thanks, th Thanksgiving that you join us today. And next time we see you, we'll go into some more details of the components of looking at those five things and how do we address them and how do we find our answers to life's sometimes perplexing problems, especially things that we can't control or change and how do you learn how to accept them. So until I see you next time, I'm your Bible teacher for the day. Russell Shepard, Maranatha.